Up to this point, we've been using only one light per 3D layer, but it's probably a little bit more realistic to use multiple lights. I mean, just consider the typical photo studio shoot. You might have three lights in that setting. Or if you're shooting with natural light, you might have a reflector or two. Well, you can simulate that inside Photoshop. You can also use lighting presets to create a mood. We're going to do both things here inside this lesson. To follow along, go to Working Files, open up Photoshop Projects, and then open up Lighting. First order of business here is to backlight this scene. So I get the Selection tool, open up the 3D panel. I'm going to take the infinite light here. I'm going to rotate it backwards. So I just cut this guy and I just pull it over the top like that once, twice. Eventually we're going to get it over the top like so and get the shadows to fall toward us right there. And now I want to illuminate the front just a little bit so it's not so dark like that. I could convert, let's say, the point light to an infinite light. But what I found when you do that, when it exists like this already, it doesn't really convert the way you want it to. I'll click on it like that and click point over here and change it to infinite. And notice it turns into infinite light number one. Not number two, but number one. So you don't have a separate light here. It's a bug, I think. Just so you know, that's what's going to happen. I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new light. New infinite light. And that'll be infinite light number two, which is what I want. So we have separate controls for that one. Obviously, that's way too bright. And also, it's throwing a shadow. And I'm not really sure I want the sphere throwing a shadow right there, for example. Let's just take a look at that for a second. I'll pull it around a little bit. Like so, and I don't want those shadows going in the background either. But I'm going to deal with both things at once here. I'm going to go over to its properties. I'm going to turn off the shadow. It takes care of that. And then I'm going to reduce its intensity quite a bit just to sort of illuminate the front there like that. That looks pretty good, but you get a better look if you do a little bit of rendering. So I'm going to go over here and get the marquee selection tool and select that area there and do a quick render. I'll fast forward through this. All right, that's just one pass. It looks a little noisy, but I think you get a sense of how that's going to work. Let's put another light on there. Now, if I take the existing point light here, I've also noticed that it kind of bounces around a little bit. I'm not sure why that is. So to avoid having that happen, I'm going to add a new point light. And I want to position it right here between the sphere and the lettuce, just to illuminate this end here. So I make sure the selection tool is on, and I click on the Alt of the Option key to target that spot right there. That already looks pretty good, but I'm going to take a look at specifically where it is. Let me close down this panel. I'm going to switch to the top view here, go to top, swap the views, and take a look at that. It looks almost where I want it to be, but I want to pull it closer to the sphere. So I have the drag tool selected, and just going to pull it there toward the sphere, just to hide it. Just to sort of illuminate these letters back there. Let's swap back here now. It's obviously too bright, and it's throwing a shadow as well. So I can take care of that by turning off its shadow. There you go. And let's knock down the intensity quite a bit, just to kind of throw a little bit of light on the end there. All right, let's take a look at the spotlight now. This one does not bounce around, so I'm going to take the existing spotlight, click on it, turn on its eyeball there so you can see it. Now you can see it's shining over there to the center. I'd rather have it shine there on the letter P, so I'm going to target it as well. Hold on the Alt or the Option key there. Hit the P like that. And again, that's throwing a shadow, and it's way too bright. Let's just take care of that by turning off the shadow, dropping its intensity quite a bit. And if I want to deal with the cone here, I think the cone is too wide. I want to focus it more on the P. Hover here at that little point there and pull the cone. Maybe expand this inner cone, which is called the hot spot, a little bit wider. And I think I want to then move it to the right a little bit. So if you recall, when you want to move it to the right, you go to the rotation tool. And you don't shove it to the right. You actually pull left, and that moves it to the right. I'll click away there. Let's do a quick render here. I'll just close that down and select all of that and do a quick render. And once again, I'll fast forward through this. Okay, that's two passes, so it's still far from perfect, but you get a sense of how that works. I'm seeing that the letters seem to be hovering above the grass there. I want to deal with that just to make sure you can see how that works. Do Control or Command D to get rid of that little marquee selection. Go back over here to Selection there like that. Click on the text once. Pull these guys down just a little bit there to put them right on top of the grass there like that. I think that works a little bit better. All right, there you go. That's how you can use three different lights in one scene. Now let me show you some presets. To get to the presets, you need to make a light active. So I'm going to go over here and close this stuff down. Just click on a light there. When you do that, that light's property panel becomes active. And at the top there, it says preset. I'm going to click on that and look at all these presets. Kind of interesting. Let's start off by looking at fire. That'll replace all of our lights with two lights. If I click on it, you'll see one's red, 
one's orange. And notice how they're positioned. They're both pointing up from down low to give the impression of fire. Very cool. Go to this one again and try something different. Let's try Mardi Gras. What do you see? There's three different colors here. Wow, again, it replaces all our lights with three lights. Let's take a look at how that's built because you've got three different colors here and you wonder how that can be with just lights. First light here is this purple light. It's coming from the left. So it's interacting with this one and this one. So purple here becomes red and purple there is still purple. Next one down here like that, it comes straight from the top. So it's illuminating the top of everything, yellow. This final one comes straight head on and gives it a green look. So that's Mardi Gras, folks. Let's try Dawn. Nice warm look there with two different lights. Sort of this purple look from the left-hand side. And the orange coming in kind of low in the sky, like the sun is just coming up and giving it this lovely orange cast. Very nice. Finally, we'll try Lush, which kind of actually matches the scene. Gives it this kind of green look, like you're in the jungle someplace. This one has four different lights. From the left, from down low to the right, from above, and from up high on the right. All these different colors blending together. It's just gorgeous, especially when you have bevels here. See how it works with the bevels there? Well, I suggest you try out these presets as well as using more than one light in your 3D layers.